we're done, I've got an applause sign right up here. On the side. So, <laughs> all right, now, as I've been teaching the kids music this year, I've been doing it around the structure of four pillars of music. <laughs> and those are the steady beat, the rhythm, the melody, and the harmony. I believe if the kids can understand these four concepts, they'll really be on their way to understanding how music works. Not only what music is, but how and why music works. So let's start with our steady beat. It's been a few weeks since we've done this because of spring break, but let's see if you guys remember your definition of steady beat. The steady beat is a pulse that stays the same speed. Exactly, it's a pulse that stays the same speed. And we'll do an activity to show everyone that we know how to keep a steady beat called student-led beat motions. In this activity, the kids get to make the decisions about how they're going to keep a beat, and everybody else will follow. So kids, I'd like you to please walk to circle formation. Bone and gap. Here we go. All right. When the music starts, you guys will watch me. Eyes on me, we'll keep a steady beat like this. let it speed up or slow down. It's hard to do. But no matter where we put it, we want to stay the same speed.
is not easy. I know some grown-ups who can't keep a steady beat as well as that. So good <laughs> job, kid. It's time for our next pillar of music. Da, 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 da. The rhythm. And our definitions of rhythm. The rhythm, rhythm is the long and short notes and rests that fit inside the beat. Good. So we have long and short notes and rests that fit inside of the beat. So if you'll um, look at the screen, we're going to do two activities. Uh, we'll do rhythm identification, so the kids will show that they know what rhythms look like, and then rhythm cards, which is where they'll read those rhythms and clap them. So first off, rhythm identification. Kids, when you know the answer, you don't need to raise your hand, just call it out. Okay, what rhythm is this? Quarter note. Quarter note, good. And this? Quarter rest. Quarter rest, good. Half, one eighth, one eighth. Eight. Yes, it's one eighth note, which is half of? Two eighth. Two eighth notes. Good. Yes. And what's this? Half, half quarter note. note. Well, that's a half note, right? Okay. Half note. And this is a half, half rest. Half rest. Good job. Okay, let's do some rhythm cards now where the kids will be reading their rhythms. Mommy, come Something called body signs. 
And body signs really emphasize the difference between low and high pitches. So we'll stick with body signs this year, and next year I'll start teaching them the hand signs that you might remember maybe when you were a kid in choir or something like that. So uh, let's sing Do, Re, Mi. once again. But this time it won't just be rhythms, it'll be rhythms with height, or high and low pitches. Therefore it'll be melodies. Okay? Um, we'll be using the same body signs that we just did, alright? And uh, we'll split it up into three levels. In level one we'll only use so and me. I'd like you and your turn and talk partners to remind each other where on your body is so and me. Okay, eyes back up here. I'm guessing some of us in the room are fairly musical, but a lot of us may not be. And so I'm going to teach just for a minute or two. I'd like to introduce to you what all these symbols mean. Okay? First is we have five lines, and those five lines, those horizontal lines that go across a page of music, we call a music staff. And a music staff tells us if pitches are high or low. We also have vertical lines called bar lines, which separate the music staff into measures. So each card will be one measure of music. Now this long squiggly sign at the beginning is called a treble clef. And a treble clef tells us we're all going to be using our high singing voices, which is great because we all have high singing voices in elementary school. Now in middle school and high school, some people will have low singing voices, but for now, we all have high singing voices, which means when I sing, I have to pretend that I have a kid voice so they can model after my, my pitches. You'll notice that in just a minute. Um, here we have a 4-4 four, four time signature, which tells us we're gonna be using four beats in a measure, here represented by hearts. And every time we do anything with solfege, we have to ask ourselves a very important question. And that question is... Where is Do? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> because you see, Do can go anywhere I tell it to go. Why? Well, it's because it's, a, it's movable Do. We can put it wherever we want. Because I'm the teacher, I get to decide. So I'm going to put it right here. Okay. And this represents that Do is on an invisible line going across the bottom of the staff. Now once you know where Do is, you can figure out what every other pitch is. So for example, kids, what pitch are we starting with here? So. So, because we always, just like reading a book, we start on the left and go to the right. So here we have So, Me, So, Me. You guys ready? Yeah. All right, let's sing it. Double up those so's. So, so, me, so, so, me. Look at this one here. kids. 
is. Now on level two, we're going to add law. So show your turn talk partner where is law. Okay, make sure you all remember. Okay, back up first. Our first pitch is what? So. 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 All right, here we go. So I'm going to put the definition on the screen, and we'll see if the kids can remember their emotions. Okay. All right, you guys ready? Yep. Here we go. The harmony is when two more pitches are played or sung at the same time. So if we're thinking big picture, we've got a beat. We've got rhythms that fit inside of beats. We've got melodies that make those rhythms either high or low. And harmony just means we have more than one melody happening at the same time, more than one pitch happening at the same time. So we're going to do a quick set change here for just a minute. Uh, in a moment, the kids will go to the instruments. So any of our audience over here, if you can just move over to this side of the classroom. Now, kids, when you go to an instrument, I'm using our instruments. And on each table, is a little note card with two notes. They're different for different instruments. So kids, when we start, we'll have the first row play just their first note. So everybody in the class, look and see what's your first note. So look on your paper. And then find that note. So look at your first note and find that on your instrument. Is it big, um, D or little D? And you can play either note you want, the big one, the little one, or both of them at the same time. The students will be rolling, which means moving their mouths quickly. Um, so we'll start with the first row playing the first note. We'll add the second row. First row you'll keep playing. We'll add the third row. Keep playing. Add the fourth row, everybody's playing, and then the fifth row with the whole class playing that first note. Then when I say switch, what happens? We start again. You will? And we all play our second note at the same time. All right, you guys ready? Yeah. Pick up those mallets. Okay, first row only, first note. Ready, go.
Libs, thank you for showing us harmony. Now leave your mallets where they are, head back to your seats, because I've got a few other things to talk about before our grand finale. here um, before our grand finale. And I want to share with you that I do have a YouTube channel. And, um, so uh, thank you so much to Mrs. Keel who's been able to take a video of this today, uh, helping out. And we're going to put this on the YouTube channel about a week so that if a, a spouse or a grandparent wasn't able to be here today um, and you'd like to share the informants with them, um, I will uh, email those out soon. Um, also, I want to say a big thank you to a few different groups because the music room today looks so much different from how it looked um, only at the beginning of the year. And the reason for that is because of the generosity of a lot of different groups of people. So starting with uh, Zionsville West Middle School. Now some of you might know this, some of you might not, but I have a connection over there at Zionsville West <laughs> Middle School. Yeah, my brother is the principal over there. And we were talking about instruments, and he remembered that in his school, he had a closet full of drums that weren't being used because they're not middle school drums. They're elementary school drums, but they were over there. So I asked if we could borrow them, and he said yes. So all the drums you see up front um, are, we're, are on loan forever uh, <laughs> at Zionsville West Middle School. Um, so that was a huge blessing. And then uh, the Zionsville Education Foundation Zeph provided us with almost all the mallet instruments you see here, as well as many of the, you might not be able to see them, but down there is some drums underneath. And Zeph provided those for us. It was a huge investment because each of these instruments cost between $300 and $1,100 for each one. So it was a, a, a major investment in the music program here. And then I want to thank the Boone Meadow PTO. I know some of you are in the Boone Meadow PTO. The um, instrument stands and the camera we're using to film this on were purchased by the PTO uh, this year. Very thankful for that. And finally, um, Zeph this summer is also sending me to Anderson University uh, to uh, do some studying and become a better music teacher by getting my ORF certification. Now, ORF is a philosophy of music that encourages more than just singing in a music class. So singing is important, and we've done singing today, but we've also done instruments. Um, we've also learned about music theory. Um, we, uh, in a moment, you'll see us um, moving to more music, and we dance sometimes in music class. Uh, and ultimately, the big goal of ORF is for the students to create their own music. So um, in, our, uh, in our final piece, in just a moment, you're going to see how they're doing just that. Now, uh, one last little announcement before we finish up. I do have a Donors Choose grant online. If you're not familiar with Donors Choose, it's just a website where parents can go to donate towards their school, uh, towards some need. Uh, now, we certainly have gotten a lot of instruments this year. I'm viewing it as a, as a building year, and so I still just got a couple more things on that wish list to wrap up. Um, these are called base bars. And it's like a xylophone, but with just one note, and it's really big. And one thing we've been talking about in music class is that the bigger the note, the lower the pitch. So these bass bars are going to create really low pitches um, on the beat. They'll be played on the beat. And that helps the students to feel the beat to keep them from speeding up and slowing. It's just another helpful um, thing and a, a wonderful instrument, two instruments. Uh, so if you're at all interested in that, I have a flyer right over here. There's no pressure at all, but if you're interested, just take one of those flyers and uh, all the information is there. All right, our final piece for today is called Bedtime at the Swamp. And hold on kids, hold on, hold on. It comes from, it comes from a book, and uh, I'll be reading you the book today. Um, but I like to take books and use um, use something like a book to create music. So in a moment, um, this when I say go, the kids will go to an instrument, um, and they will play. Uh, they will actually be improvising. 
Now, improvisation is a concept we've been working on this year, which means that they make it up as they go. Um, it's not a free-for-all, though, because there's a poem that provides us with the rhythm. You guys remember your poem? Yeah. yeah. It goes no. like this. Yeah. No. Splish, splash, roomba, roomba, bing, bam, boom. So that's their rhythm, but they get to pick their own notes. There's another part where they'll be rolling, and there's a third part to this piece where the kids are all playing together the same notes, starting on this a. little A, okay? All right, when I say go, I'd like you guys to go to your instruments and take off your notes C and F. There's two C's and two F's. Okay, go. Okay, bye, 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 Oh wait, take off wait, the what? Is it the big C's and oh. C's. Oh. Is it the big C's? Both C's, both C's, both C's. and click my button at the same time. We'll okay. see how that goes. So if you want, you can uh, follow along. Are right, you guys ready? Yep. I was sitting by a swamp just humming a tune with the fireflies dancing with the fat gold moon. When off in the distance was a splashing sound, so I stood on my tiptoes and I looked around. I heard
black lagoon. But just when we thought we faced certain doom, we heard splash. Distances, but it's great to have you here in the classroom supporting what we're doing. Um, also, thank you, Mr. Hunley, for letting me do this and for supporting me in the music room. Uh, thank you to Mrs. Keel and their teacher, Mrs. Megley, for um, all that they've done to make this work today. Too. So one more time, let's give a big round of applause for these kids. 